has granted a postponement of the under oath testimony of Jeffrey Clark that was scheduled for tomorrow because Jeffrey Clark has lost his lawyer. The Washington Post reports that Jeffrey Clark's lawyer, Robert, Robert Driscoll, quote, had dropped his representation of the former justice official. Because of the change, the committee granted Clark a brief postponement, according to a committee staffer. It was not clear why Driscoll and Clark split, but people familiar with the matter suggested that it had to do with whether Clark would cooperate with the committee's requests. Jeffrey Clark was reportedly trying to stage a coup within the Justice Department and get himself promoted to acting attorney general by drafting a letter to Georgia officials that urged them to investigate non-existent voter fraud. Donald Trump was considering a plan to fire his acting attorney general and install Jeffrey Clark as attorney general so that that letter could be sent. It was only when Donald Trump was confronted with the possibility of the immediate protest resignations of virtually everyone else at the top of the Justice Department if he fired the acting attorney general, that Donald Trump then retreated from that plan. Joining us now is Paul Butler, law professor at Georgetown University and a former federal prosecutor. He is an MSNBC legal analyst. Uh, Paul, I'm, I'm fascinated by the postponement of Jeffrey Clark's testimony because he lost his lawyer. And this reporting in the Washington Post that the separation from the lawyer has something to do with whether he will cooperate with the committee. What is your interpretation of all of that? It's really interesting. So, Lawrence, when a lawyer leaves a case, she is required by attorney-client privilege to continue to respect confidential information. So we don't know if Jeffrey Clark fired his lawyer or if the lawyer quit uh, on his own. It's been reported, as you said, that there was this dispute between Clark and the lawyer about whether Clark would cooperate with the House committee. If Clark refuses to cooperate with the committee, he risks being held in criminal contempt. So at some point, Clark has to make a decision that's quite common with people in Donald Trump's orbit. Is he more afraid of Donald Trump or is he more afraid of going to jail? Let's, for the moment, assume that uh, Attorney Driscoll, who's no longer representing Clark, uh, is making honorable choices here. Uh, would it, for example, be an honorable choice if the lawyer said, I'm not going to represent you if you do cooperate with the committee? If the lawyer thinks that that's not in the best interest of his client, then he certainly is entitled to do that. He has to get permission from the judge and explain his reasoning to the judge. But if the judge approves it, he can quit the case. But in, but in an instance like this, where there is no judge, I mean, that would be, in a, say, in a courtroom, in a civil case or, or a criminal case in a courtroom, but there's no judge here. So that's what, that's what makes this so weird, right? We, we're absent a certain kind of information we might have is if this had been a court case. Yes, that's absolutely right. So, again, it's the lawyer's prerogative if he doesn't feel like he's the best person to represent the client to suggest respectfully that the client find another attorney. And we know that the committee is not being especially patient about these things. So uh, we could we could maybe read into the granting of a, a brief postponement here. Uh, the sense that the committee believes Clark is headed toward cooperation with them. Yes, and the committee also understands that Trump's claims about executive privilege are weak. No court has ever said that that applies to a former president, and the privilege only applies to official presidential duties, which do not include trying to subvert an election. So eventually, everybody who is trying to fight Having to testify or turn over documents is going to lose. Trump is going to lose his fight to prevent people from testifying. But, Lawrence, it may take a long time for Trump to lose, depending on the speed or lack thereof at which courts resolve these issues.
And of course, uh, agreeing to testify uh, still leaves open the possibility that there'd be some questions unanswered. I mean, a Clark, for example, could conceivably invoke the Fifth Amendment in certain situations. That's his absolute right. And again, if he faces criminal exposure with his truthful testimony, any lawyer would advise him to take the fifth. Paul Butler, thank you very much for joining us again tonight. We always appreciate it. Always a pleasure. Thank you. And coming up, there has been some speculation that former New York Governor Andrew Cuomo might try to win the governorship back next year since he still has $18 million in campaign funds. But today, in an Albany court, Andrew Cuomo was charged with the crime of four.